Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. Here is Biden administration's strategy for Sub-Saharan Africa. Our strategy is rooted in the recognition that Sub-Saharan Africa is a major geopolitical force. One that shaped our past, is shaping our present, and will shape our future. It's a strategy that reflects the region's complexity, its diversity, its power and influence. And one that focuses on what we will do with African nations and peoples, not for African nations and peoples. Put simply, the United States and African nations can't achieve any of our shared priorities, whether that's recovering from the pandemic, creating broad-based economic opportunity, addressing the climate crisis, expanding energy access, revitalizing democracies, strengthening the free and open international order. We can't do any of that if we don't work together as equal partners. So today, I'd like to focus on four priorities that we believe we have to tackle together, which are at the heart of the U.S. strategy for Sub-Saharan Africa. First, we will foster openness, by which we mean the capacity of individuals, communities, and nations to choose their own path and shape the world we live in. When leaders of newly independent African nations came together in 1963 to establish the Organization of African Unity, the predecessor of the African Union, Here's how they began their charter, convinced that it is the inalienable right of all people to control their own destiny. It was a conviction born of the struggle of generations of Africans whose destiny had been determined by colonial powers. This inalienable right depends on a system of rules and principles, which Africans have helped forge over decades through their leadership in institutions like the United Nations and the African Union. And yet, too often, African nations have been treated as instruments of other nations' progress rather than the authors of their own. Time and again, they have been told to pick a side in great power contests that feel far removed from daily struggles of their people. The United States will not dictate Africa's choices, neither should anyone else. The right to make these choices belongs to Africans and Africans alone. At the same time, the United States and the world will look to African nations to defend the rules of the international system that they've done so much to shape. These include the right of every country to have its independence, its sovereignty, its territorial integrity respected, a principle at stake now in Ukraine. We believe that all nations should be able to stand up for the right of a country not to have its borders redrawn by force. For if we allow that principle to be violated anywhere, we weaken it everywhere. Openness also means creating pathways for the free flow of ideas, information, investment, which in the 21st century requires digital connectivity. So the United States is partnering with African governments, businesses, entrepreneurs to build and adapt the infrastructure that enables that connectivity. An open, reliable, interoperable, secure internet, data centers, cloud computing. Our initiative called Feed the Future will invest $11 billion over five years in 20 partner countries, 16 of which are in Africa. And a new initiative we launched with the United Arab Emirates is turbocharging investment and innovation in climate smart agriculture. Now, it's not just agriculture. Across a range of fields, the United States is working with African partners to try to unlock innovation and growth. As we do, we're building on African-led initiatives such as the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, which, when fully implemented, will comprise the fifth largest economic bloc in the world, and also the African Union's Agenda 2063. Now, think about infrastructure for a minute. At the G7 meeting just recently held, President Biden led in launching the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment, which will mobilize $600 billion globally, 
toward concrete projects over the next five years. The United States is committed to raising $200 billion toward this effort. And we're already implementing projects that are focused on health, on digital infrastructure, empowering women and girls, energy and climate. Consider youth. Yesterday, I met with alumni of the Mandela Washington Fellowship. Since President Obama launched the program eight years ago, more than 5,000 rising leaders from every country in sub-Saharan Africa have come to the United States for academic and leadership training, building skills and, as important, relationships that will last a lifetime. The broader YALI network, which provides tools, resources, a virtual community for young African leaders, now has more than 700,000 members. You heard that Secretary Blinken clearly told us what the plan is for Africa. And clearly, if there's any African country that will fall for this and believe US is in Africa for our benefit, I don't know what to tell you. I think it's about time that we start seeing their actions instead of what they promise us and what they tell us. At the end of the day, these politicians are serving their masters. They are there to serve their own agenda. So it's really unfortunate if there's anybody actually in this continent that believes in what they're trying to sell us. Anyways, fam, let us know down below what your thoughts are about this. I am Wengel Zalalem. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Colonization never ended in the white supremacist system. And as we see today, the colonization is in the mind. Now, those who have been enslaved and those who have been colonized, we're still dealing with the remnants of that through the colonization of the mind. Pick up my book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, and we will help deprogram you from the colonization that was put upon you by generations and generations of white supremacy. You can pick it up today on Amazon.com.